Winnipeg Sports Talk, live at the NHL Draft, presented by CoolBet. All right, we're here with Daryl Evans. Daryl, first of all, best dressed man at the draft, as always. Uh, how are you enjoying the weekend? Ah, you know, it's always great coming together here get, uh, to see everybody in the hockey world under one roof. Uh, some great relationships that you've made over the years and some old friends and you meet some new people as well. So it's real. It's really nice. I guess the weekend is coming up, but it kind of <laughs> feels like a weekend, but very busy. Um, listen, for uh, Jets and Kings fans, uh, things got off to a... Uh, big start with a pretty big trade. Um, let me just ask you right off the bat, um, what was your uh, reaction to uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois to the Kings and the package coming back to Winnipeg? Well, I think it's a great deal both ways. And, you know, that's why trades are made. Uh, you know, both teams are looking for something in particular uh, in order to take the next step with where they are at in, in, with their franchise. From the Kings' standpoint, the last couple of years, making it to the playoffs, uh, you know, recognizing a need for some size and uh, j just some depth up the middle of the ice and physicality. And I think Dubois does a great job at fitting that. He brings some offense. He can help complement the group that's in place. And the package that the Winnipeg Jets get is real solid. Uh, Alex Iafalo is a real solid player. He can play in every position that you want up front. Uh, Velarde, he's an up-and-coming young player. He's you know, over 20 goals last year. A lot of potential there. And Rasmus Kapari proved that he can play you know, as a role model, uh, uh, pardon me, as a role player right now in the NHL and maybe elevate his role as well, a former first-round pick. You know, uh, let's start off with Velarde. He sort of is the centerpiece of this trade. I mean, a younger player, first-round pick, under team control for a number of years. He uh, had a breakout season last year. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you saw and how he uh, grew into a guy that was a real difference maker for the Kings on most nights. Yeah, he's a, you know, took a big step this past year, and uh, I think the Kings and the Winnipeg Jets now expect him, uh, you know, to raise that ceiling a little bit more. A lot of more confidence in his game. He's got the versatility to be able to play the wing and center. Uh, great on the power play. He's got exceptionally soft hands, great vision on the ice, and he's a big, strong kid. So uh, there's a lot there. I think he can help their power play out. And again, he's going to compliment the guys that he's on the ice with. He'll make them better players because of his hockey IQ. Uh, I have Fallow comes with a reputation of being a a real solid a middle six player, a great 200-foot game defensively as well. Um, what can he bring to the Winnipeg Jets when he gets into the lineup next season? Well, he's a guy that can move up and down your lineup. You know, you say a middle, you know, middle six type of forward, but he can elevate as he's played most of his career with guys like Andre Kopitar, Dustin Brown. He can play the left side, the right side, even a little bit in the middle. He can play on the power play, the penalty kill. And aside from how valued Bully is on the ice, he's just a great person as an individual, a great teammate. The guys are going to love him and. Uh, the coaches are going to love him because he's a great bridge between you know the coaches and the young players coming in. I don't think Winnipeg fans know a lot about Rasmus Kampari. Uh, he is a, a former first rounder. Uh, tell us a little bit about his game and, and how much he might benefit from maybe more opportunity in a Winnipeg Jet lineup as opposed to what he might have been behind in the LA Kings. I agree with you 100%. Uh, you know Kampari again, former first round pick. He's got size. He's a good skater. Good vision on the ice. Uh, he took on a role as a little bit on the penalty kill. Uh, they took show a lot of trust in him and that he improved in the face-off circle he too can play both center and the wing shoots the puck well I still think there's a little bit more offense in his game that we saw in LA and maybe because of the situation he was in LA where he was playing maybe a little bit smothered so now an opportunity to kind of rebirth in in his in his uh, career and a chance maybe to be elevate his role and maybe play on that third line but uh, it'll be an interesting to see where his career goes in the next couple of years. A really big commitment to PLD with the eight-year extension at $8.5 million, but I imagine from a Kings standpoint, they're pretty excited looking at that center ice position going into the next season with Kopitar, Dono, and now Pierre-Luc. Yeah, that's a great uh, you know uh, lineup up the middle of the ice. It allows them to line up against pretty much anybody in the league and makes the Kings that much more difficult to play against. Bringing a guy in like Dubois up the middle of the ice, he now finishes off everybody. You look at like last year, you know, with Velarde playing on the wing, Byfield got switched over to the wing a little bit. Uh, you know, and we saw that uh, Kevin Fiala, who was acquired last year in the offseason, he really didn't have a you know a permanent centerman. So now with the block coming up the middle of the ice, the Kings are going to be able to put three lines together that are not only going to be able to create offense, it should give them a lot more time and possession with the puck and make them that much deeper. Daryl, I don't know if you've had a chance to check out the NHL schedule yet, but uh, 
game three of the season, the Jets' second home game is against none other than the Los Angeles Kings in Winnipeg. It'll be a homecoming for Pierre-Luc and uh, obviously a chance for uh, the former Kings to play against their season. What a way to get things going in week one. Yeah, it really is, especially with such a, you know, a, a big trade, a trade that you know, impacts both franchises. Uh, you know, I think the, you know, the fans in, in Winnipeg are really going to enjoy the guys that they've got. Uh, they'll, uh, there are three guys who can step in and play immediately. With Dubois coming and the commitment that he made to the Kings and the Kings made to him, that there's a future there. Uh, you know, eventually there's going to be a passing of the torch. You look at a guy like Kopitar who's played his entire career with the Kings. You know, he can't play forever, unfortunately, but uh, Dubois is going to be embraced by the Kings fan. And I think it's good to get one of those games out of the way early in the season because there's going to be a lot of emotions on both sides. Daryl, great to see you again. Keep turning heads. Thanks so much for your time. Always a pleasure. We'll look forward to seeing you in Winnipeg real soon. <laughs>